Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Chad J. Gibson and today we're going to be talking about the five reasons why I left South Africa for good. My home country. So buckle up. Here we go. That was a good intro. That, that time I did it well. Oh, the amount of times I recorded that intro. So firstly, this video is not going to be the most positive video, um, just because this is obviously about why I left South Africa. And I know that I have quite a number of South African viewers. So for those of you who are quite proudly South African and quite happy to stay in South Africa, maybe you won't like this video too much. But just understand that this is my personal feelings. This is things I kind of noticed. And this is just the kind of stuff that really bothered me and really got to me. And it's my reasons for leaving. Um, if you have reasons for staying in South Africa, that is perfectly fine and well. Maybe your reasons are different from mine. But... This is just a personal perspective. This is just um, the way I saw things and what just made me decide to leave for good, really. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. The crime rate in South Africa is insane. I know there are other countries in the world where there is a lot of crime. But South Africa is known as the rape capital of the world. One of the jobs I did previously, I was kind of very public facing, let's just say. And I would meet a lot of South Africans that had just come to Ireland or have been living here for a little bit. And at least 90% of them had some horror story of something absolutely terrible that happened to them in South Africa because of something crime related and you know I think if you were to go to South Africa and ask anyone that lives there if they've ever been affected by or had known someone that's been affected really badly by crime and I'm not just talking about you know someone um, snatching a little bit of money out of your pocket. Like, there is people that go through life-threatening events and it changes them, you know? it Sometimes it, it has a serious effect on these people. Some of the stuff that happened to the people around me, you know, my dad, my family, and it's like... That stuff could happen to anyone in South Africa. And at any point, you just have to be walking down the wrong road at the wrong time. And your whole life is turned upside down. In fact, you know, I think it's actually like an achievement to make it you know, to old age in South Africa without having experienced something, something horrendous like that. And, you know, props to those people that have gone through life carefully and didn't get any of that stuff happen to them. If you come to a place like Ireland and you see the difference in terms of this place and there, it's like, with the crime at least, it's night and day. The next one is the economy the economy yeah so the economy kind of bothered me this was something i only sort of realized later on in life when i started to pay attention to it you know the rand so the south african currency for those of you who are not south african um it just kind of it's been dropping since 
since the beginning really you know it it's gone from worse to worse and then you see a slight increase and then it just drops more and it's i think now junk status um i'm not living there now but i know it has gone down and i guess that is partly because of the current crisis we're living in but still south africa now has rolling blackouts um i don't know if you know the people that aren't from south africa actually know this but it's there's rolling blackouts uh food is incredibly expensive you know the last time i went there to visit i was shocked because the prices are getting similar to what the prices of food is here in ireland in, here in ireland you earn in euros so it's it's not that bad but in South Africa, for the food prices to be that expensive, and especially in a poorer country like that, it's it's not a good sign. None of it's a good sign. The RAND being as weak as it is and continuing to be weak, the government having to take out loans and you know rolling blackouts. The the energy, the main energy suppliers in the country having financial problems and needing to be bailed out and there's a lot of problems with the economy um i think anyone that knows anything about south africa can tell you that there is a lot of problems there and this crisis hasn't made it easier of course but there has been problems for a while and it has been getting worse Next one is racism. <laughs> racism in South Africa. Oh, you'd have thought they got over the whole racist thing after apartheid, but no, no, they didn't. It's kind of just taken on a different form, really. Um, you see, one of the biggest things that really bother me in South Africa is there are particular parties, and this being the ruling party known as the ANC, and another smaller party, but third in running, the EFF, which seem to believe that being... A white person means that you need to atone for some sort of original sin. There's this belief that because of colonialism, because of um, apartheid, you you kind of meant to feel guilty about these things, and like I. I I'm going to be dead honest with you here. I don't feel guilty about these things because I didn't commit any of these things. And I don't think anyone should be feeling guilty about something they can't help, like the color of their skin that they were born with. I think you should be perfectly fine. And it shouldn't matter if you are not committing any of these things yourself. You should have no reason to feel guilty and you shouldn't be blamed for any of it because it's not you you did nothing now of course i understand there are still people that are alive today that were involved and i'm not speaking about those people because that's their baby really i me personally i had nothing to do with it there's another thing in south africa called bee which is black economic empowerment basically it means that if you are born with black skin you are more likely to get a job shall we say um, the government basically gives incentives for companies to hire a certain number of black people within the company and that would be all fine, but that also means that if 
a white candidate and a black candidate apply for the same job and that can company sees them both as equal they're more likely to hire the black candidates because they will be getting all these incentives from the government versus the white guy. So what happens is the white guy struggles to get a job because of this. Because, of course, the majority in South Africa is not white, it's black. So if the majority is black and the majority are getting the majority of jobs, it makes it a lot harder for those people who are white to get a job. And there's, like, people say that that's not racist. Um, but I don't really agree with that. Uh, I, I, I can't see how that's not racist. You, you're, you're basing something purely off of race. And you are excluding every other race other than the majority race. <laughs> that also does mean actually not only white people, but Indian, um, mixed race, uh, Asian. Although, and I, I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's still the case, but I think that if you were Chinese in South Africa, you could still get... Um, black economic empowerment meaning you could you you still got the benefits for that i don't know for sure but <laughs> yeah south africa is um fairly close with china because you know that's an absolutely wonderful country to be close with the other thing was actually land expropriation uh where they said they were gonna take if you were a white farmer, they were going to take part of your land without payment and give it to some poor, impoverished people. So, and th this was, a, by the way, the, the, the atonement for the original sin, they call it, that they could now take land without paying you for it. Of course, they said they'll start with the government-owned land, but um, we'll see how far that goes once that runs out. I don't like that stuff. I don't like the whole race thing. In fact, I don't even like talking about it. You know, I, I try to avoid these things. I, I just generally try and avoid the whole subject because I just can't stand it. I feel like the whole thing just divides people more than anything else. And that's not what I want to do. It's not what I want my videos to be about. There are people that are just fine. Like they don't, they aren't interested in this race thing. They just want to go about their lives and they make friends with, you know, whoever they get along with, regardless of skin color. And that's great, you know. But I don't think everyone's doing that. And I don't think that the politicians are specifically trying to push for that politics oh i kind of went into this on the last point <laughs> but um <clears throat> the politics of south africa is real interesting here's a rough summary since the end of apartheid the same party has held the majority of votes. They are known as the ANC. And the thing is, people keep voting for this party, regardless of how bad things get. I mean, the economy has literally been going downhill since they took power, and that was in 1994, until the present. And yet, every election, they still get the majority of votes. They literally put a rapist who couldn't even count into power as a president. 700 
listen properly, 769,820. <clears throat> and the majority continued to vote for them. Then it's found out this guy basically sold out the country to an Indian crime family. And, you know, that didn't look too good, so they had to replace him, uh, as if being a rapist wasn't bad enough. So they replace him with his second in command because, well, you know, of course he didn't know anything about all that corruption that was going on. And yes, you guessed it, the majority, once again, voted for the same party. What do you think of that? It's a new little thing I'm planning to do for my videos. I had a little animation here and there. I can do those. So, uh, yeah, I think I might do that just here and there where I can. It does take a long time to do though, but you're worth it. And lastly, to end this on a brighter note, shall we say, um, it was the call to adventure. The call to adventure. Basically, I wanted to try something new. You know, Ireland was different. I wanted to see what it was like to live in a country that wasn't a place I've been all my life and experience the world in a way. And I think that's the case for a lot of people that end up leaving their home countries. Sometimes they leave countries that, you know, are perfectly fine. In fact, I think there's quite a lot of Irish people that end up leaving Ireland to go live in the US, um, which I'd say is probably a less safe country than Ireland. But, you know, they choose it because they want to experience something different, I guess. And yeah, that's that's what I wanted. I think it is important that we experience something completely new and alien. It, it broadens the mind. It really does. You see things from a different perspective. And the other thing that's great about it is there's this kind of thing where you have to leave your home to know exactly what's wrong with it, if that makes sense. You don't just want to be stuck at home and you might not see all the problems until you go to another place that doesn't have these problems and then you start to realize just how many problems your home actually had because you realize that that might not be normal because you thought that those problems were normal and for a lot of these things that i've been talking about it's it's really not normal it's just, it's a really bad situation. I guess it's just one of those things you got to experience to completely understand. But I would say that it is worth it. It is worth it trying out. And maybe you go to a foreign country and realize it's not for you. And that home was actually better. And then that, you know, that's good for you. That's great then maybe your home country is exactly where you need to be. But that wasn't the case for me. After coming here, I really realized I don't want to go back. Not even as a last resort. I am perfectly happy to be in a foreign country and I really do hope that South Africa turns around and things get better and I hope that I am wrong and that you know things don't get worse I'd love to be wrong and for those of you who are proudly South African I too am proudly South African I'm proud to have gone through all of this and made it semi unscathed I, I feel like I've been through a lot and it's been a real adventure for me coming from a place like that and 
coming to a place like Ireland and, you know, Ireland itself is an adventure. It's, it's an amazing place with amazing people. And yeah, it's, it's great to experience new things, but I do miss South Africa to an extent. <laughs> I don't miss all those problems, but I definitely miss the people, you know, the good people, my friends and my family. And I, I miss some, the sunny weather. <laughs> it rains a lot here in Ireland and it takes a bit of getting used to, but I've kind of gotten, like, it's not too bad now. I've gotten used to it and it's, it is what it is. You know, I guess I'm more unlikely to get skin cancer. So that's great. Um, yeah. Also, everything's always really green here. I don't think you realize just how green it is. The grass is green all year round. The South Africans watching this won't really get that because it kind of dies in winter. But no, no, here, all year round, all year round, all year round, all year round, the grass is green. Um, again, I hope I didn't offend any of the proudly South African people out there. But like I said, I am actually proudly South African. I just, I didn't want to stay there because I saw a lot of problems and I felt like it was only going to get worse. I could be wrong about it. I'm fully willing to admit that I could be completely wrong about it and things could get better. And I really, really, really do hope that that's the case. Uh, if I haven't said that enough, um, but I don't feel like it's going to happen. I obviously have my suspicions and thus why I'm not in South Africa right now and why I don't plan on going back. Also that the whole adventure thing is pretty fun. So yeah, I'm sorry about this video if it hurt any feelings or offended people. I don't, I really don't mean to do that. Look, if you like South Africa, stay. <laughs> you don't have to listen to me. Um, but uh, yeah, let, let's just cut it there and call it a day. Anyway, let me know what uh, you thought of this video. If you disagree or agree with any of my points, please do comment down below. And if you have any stories of, you know, leaving South Africa, or if you're planning to leave South Africa and have any questions, again, comment down below. I'll be happy to answer whatever you need. Um, and I hope that this helped someone in some way. I don't know. Uh, if you're on the fence and you can't decide whether you want to make the leap or not. Um, and yeah, that's all, I, that's all I can think of. So yeah, please do like, subscribe and comment down below and all that good stuff. And I will most certainly see you on the next one. Goodbye, people. Goodbye. Thank you.